In my last two videos, I made a pair of floating nightstands for each side of the bed, as well as this massive headboard made from this gorgeous piece of black walnut. Well, they turned out fantastic, but now I need to sort of balance things out a bit by making something for the foot of the bed. I need a place where I can sit down and put on my socks and shoes and to contemplate the complexities of life. Like, why is the word abbreviated such a long word? Eh, anyways, I designed this little bench after taking some inspiration from some Japanese-style pieces. I particularly liked the idea of incorporating this tusked mortise and tenon joint, but I've never built anything using this before, so it ought to be a pretty decent challenge, and hopefully I can learn a few things along the way. Now, to visualize it in the room, I took a picture and I imported it as a canvas into Fusion. I scaled it to the right size, and there you have it. This is what it'll look like when I'm all done. I think that'll be perfect. All right. Let's build it. My neighbor picked up a big slab to make a headboard out of, and I told him that was a ridiculous idea and that no one in their right mind would ever do such a thing. So I cut it in half, and I'll make my bench from the pieces. And after doing a little measuring, I was pretty sure that I could actually get all of the pieces I'd need from this one slab. I just had to channel my 1987 Tetris skills to make them all fit. But after laying them all out with tape, I was pretty sure that I had it all mapped out. Next was getting them cut out. I used my track saw to rip a straight edge down one of the pieces. One issue I had though, was that the saw didn't plunge deep enough to get all the way through the slab. So once that cut was done, I had to go back and finish it up with a pole saw. But it worked. And then I cross cut the slab to finish cutting out what will be the top of the bench. Now with that done, I could move on to the table saw to make some more cuts. Now this was a big two inch thick piece of hardwood, but I just made sure that my blade was sharp and that my feed rate wasn't too fast and my saw didn't have any issues with it whatsoever. Next stop was over at the miter saw to cut some of these pieces to length. And then I had the slab broken down and all the pieces rough cut to size. Next was getting the pieces to their final thickness. And instead of sunning them through the planer a zillion times, I used the bandsaw to resaw off the majority of the material. Then over at the planer, I could have it smooth out all the bandsaw marks and bring each piece down to its desired thickness. And for the pieces that all needed to be the same length, I just bundled them together and then I cut them all at once. Now it's time to start cutting the tenons in the uprights and the sides. And to do that, I'm gonna use a dado stack. Now you don't have to have a dado set to do this, but it sure speeds up the process. I get it dialed in to the exact right height, and then I can use my miter gauge and a stop block to cut the pieces. And once I had the tenons cut on the one end, I could use the flip stop on my miter gauge to help me cut the tenon on the other ends. And the last set of tenons I had to make were on the ends of the stretcher. Now I can start to lay out where all the mortises need to be made in the bottoms of the bench. And once I had all those areas marked out, I could take the pieces over to the drill press to hog out the majority of the waste. I went around each of the mortises with a razor so that I could create a knife line. This will act as a guide and let me put the tip of the chisel right into the cut. And now, let me play you the song of my people.
It actually went a lot quicker than I thought it would. I was able to get the bulk of it chiseled out in no time, but then I ended up spending just as much time fine-tuning each of the mortises, removing a little off the sides and the bottom here and there until I had the perfect fit. Next, I wanted to give the bottoms a big round over at the router table. I clamped on a piece of scrap against it so that the edge of the piece was completely supported and this protected against getting any tear out from the router bit. The next step was to make the mortises that go in both of the sides. I start by using a Forstner bit and drilling a hole all the way through, and then using a jigsaw to remove as much of the rest that I can. Once I had cut away the majority of it, I switched back to my chisels and used a knife line again to finish cleaning up the sides. I went about halfway down, flipped the piece over, and then continued it from the other side so as not to have any nasty tear out. Then when I went to work on the bench top, I noticed that the bottom wasn't perfectly flat. And since I thoroughly enjoy punishing myself with physically exhausting tasks, I decide to fix it by using a hand plane. The fact of the matter is, the slab was just too wide to fit through my planer and too long for my CNC, so this was my only option. But on the bright side, my arms were too weak to even lift a can of soda the next day, so I actually ended up making some healthy choices. And in the end, I got it perfect. Next up, I could put a flap disc sander onto my angle grinder and grind through the rough exterior of the slab edges and uncover the sap wood underneath. From there, I shaped the edges a bit and gave them a really soft appearance and rounded all the edges over. Now it was time for the mortises to be cut into the slab. Just like in the bottoms, these mortises are going to be for the uprights and for the sides, but the difference is that the ones for the uprights will be going all the way through the slab. And like I did before, I use a drill to remove as much of the waste that I can. And since I can't heave this behemoth up onto my drill press, I use a drill guide to make sure that the holes were perfectly vertical. Afterwards, I chiseled out the mortise just like I did the others, cleaned out all the shavings, and made fine-tuning adjustments to it until I had the piece fitting in there all the way up to the tenon's shoulder. Now since the mortises for the uprights will go all the way through the slab, this means I needed to transfer the location of the mortise around the end and up onto the top of the slab and say a few prayers that I actually did it correctly. The reason for this is because I wanted to protect against tear out by drilling and chiseling from both the top and the bottom, and then essentially have the two mortises meet in the middle. But I gotta tell you, I was super nervous because if my measurements were off, even by just a bit, then the mortises wouldn't meet up and I could ruin the entire piece. But thankfully, my prayers were answered. It's hard to see exactly how well that lined up, but if I take my cell phone with its little light on there, you can see it is perfect. I actually did something right. With them drilled, this meant I could start to chisel my way down. I started on the bottom and I worked my way through until I was roughly halfway. Then I flipped the slab over and I started chiseling down from the top. Eventually, the two met to form one glorious, perfectly aligned mortise. And now I have to do it three more times. And the test fit. Perfect. Now that I was done with transferring measurements from the bottom to the top, I could round over the sharp edges on the ends of the slab and then smooth them out with a good sanding. Okay, now I needed to create a mortise that goes through the tenon of the stretcher. And this is different from the other mortises too because this one has one angled side. See, the tusk that'll be put into this mortise will be shaped like a wedge. 
so that means the mortise has to reflect that shape as well. Once I was done drilling out as much as I could, I got the piece clamped down securely on my bench. From there, I started chiseling the bottom side of the mortise first and went about halfway through. Then I flipped the piece over and I started on the other side. And once the two mortises connected, I worked on removing a little bit at a time to form that angled wall. Eventually, I had it looking pretty good, but I needed a tusk to test it out with. And for those, I grabbed a piece of curly maple. I cut it down to size and I grinded the angle into it on the disc sander. Yeah, it fits perfect. And remember, this whole tusked mortise and tenon joint, it's just for looks. It's like when kids these days put a spoiler on a front wheel drive car. It's just for looks. It's not actually going to do anything. Next, I put together a small jig to hold each of the uprights in the right place so that I could drill a couple tiny holes through their tenon. Then on the bandsaw, I carefully cut down to those holes. Now, if you make your tenons this way, you'll keep them from splitting once you drive the wedges in during assembly. And as for the wedges themselves, I made those on the table saw with my crosscut sled. I gave all the pieces a good sanding and then I was ready for assembly. I started by first gluing on the feet onto the bottoms. And once they were dried, I could move on to gluing the sides into place. The uprights got glued in next. And then the stretcher can be put through the sides to connect them both. And I figured the easiest way to put on the top would be to assemble the whole thing upside down so that I could easily line everything up. I just let the ends overhang the bench so that the tenons of the uprights wouldn't get held up. Then I just wailed on it like it owed me money until I had it close to being fully seated. And at that point, I could go around the tenons and add a little bit of glue before beating on it some more and sending it all the way home. Then I cinched everything together with a couple clamps and I tapped in the tusks to lock it all together. The tenons of the uprights got trimmed down to size. And the wedges were glued and put in. And once dried, those were flush trimmed off and everything was sanded flush. Next, I used a router in a way that will probably get me some interesting remarks in the comments section of the video, and then I cleaned up all the burning with some files. I burned my logo in the bottom, and then I found a perfect little brass flathead screw from my grandpa's old stash, which he then handed down to my dad, which I eventually got. Well, now I'm going to add this little guy to the project as a nod of gratitude to them for passing on their love for woodworking to me. Now for a finish, I'll be using the stung oil from Bumble Shoots again because that's what I've used for everything else in the bedroom and I kind of want it all to match. Plus, it just looks so darn good and it's so easy to apply. I just thin it down a bit with some solvent so that it can penetrate the wood more. Then I simply brush it on. I let it drip down into all the nooks and the crannies and then I keep applying more once the wood drinks it in. Then, once it's not soaking in anymore, I buff off the excess with a cotton rag, and then I let the piece sit for a while. After a while, the finish starts to harden, while at the same time really bringing out that dark character of the wood. It's a great finish. If you'd like to try it or any of the other products over at Bumbleshoots.com, then use the code FISHER10 to save yourself some money. Alright, well, here's the finished product. Just check out that bench top. I love the live edges in that sapwood. And those little wedged tenons are such a cool little accent. The tusks and the chamfers on the tenon really turned out stunning too. I'm so happy I tried out that technique. Overall, I'm thrilled. It was quite a challenge, but it turned out great. Now let's get it up to the bedroom.
Well, just as the picture at the beginning in the video showed, it looks great at the foot of our bed. And now I have a place where I can sit down and put my shoes on and show everybody my developing male pattern baldness. But the bench feels great. It's just at the right height for me and even for my dog, who has immediately started using it to get up on the bed. Hey, if you think you'd like to try out this project, I'll have very detailed plans available on my website over at fishersshoponline.com. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to click that like button and leave me a comment down below. And if you're new here, welcome. I hope you'd consider subscribing. Well, until next time, take care, and I'll see you later. That's really good, Drew. Smear it. Why don't you want to come out? Slip like that and I'm bleeding. Dang it. Now the corner of the chisel caught my thumb just a tiny little bit. Just a little cut, thankfully. But uh, happens to the best of us. Oh crap! Holy crapskies. That whole thing split. <coughs> oh! Crap. Jeez. Oh no. Oh crap. Oh no, I just glued it to the screen. No. Oh no, I glued it to my thumb. <gasps> oh no. gosh I put the stretcher in upside down I put it in upside down oh my gosh so to fix the whole upside down stretcher upside down tusk issue what I ended up doing was finding the exact angle of the mortise against the tusk which should have been the top uh, and then making a wedge that fits that angle. And now what I'll do is I'll just glue this in down there and then flush trim it off. And that way at least the tusk is being supported equally on the mortise uh, and it's not just pinching at the top. So hopefully that will remedy that issue, but <sighs> such a bonehead mistake.